short a uh, short update on the cold case of Peter Baglin, who also disappeared apparently along the same the same exact stretch of road at the River Weir. There's a few interesting circumstances around that. I'll be explaining those. Again, I'll, I'll explain more of what my uh, sense is on that in the video. Thank you. Peter Baglin has gone missing along the towpath. Police are searching for any leads. And no leads have yet to come forward. You are my world, stated the wife of missing Southward grandfather Peter Baglin. The wife of the missing grandfather who left his house to go down for a walk on the towpath and never return has started to really turn heads in the area of England. Peter Baglin, age 55, from Boothstown in Worsley, went missing from the area on the 28th of December. Apparently, CCTV video footage cap captured uh, Peter Baglin buying a small bottle of whiskey at the Texaco Garage uh, station post on East Lanks Road at Mosley Commons at 7.38 p.m. He last spoke to his wife Michelle on the phone at 8.15 p.m. telling her he was going along for a long walk on the towpath of the Bridgewater Canal. Now what's interesting about this folks is the towpath with the Bridgewater Canal, right, is just on the other side of Rowan Water Fishing Law, which is something I found, uh, you know, quite fascinating. Also, the fact remains that the uh, towpath and the Rowan Water Fishing Lodge are right next to the River Weir. So, I found that quite interesting. You know, we have another missing person case allegedly two, right directly next to the same area of the river, uh, the river Weir, of course. His wife, Michelle Baglin, stated, I was like, where, where did you go? And knew something was not right. Police had found his phone, keys, and bank card at the bottom of the embankment. The next day, they claimed to find his headphones, and then I knew something was up. Since his disappearance... Michelle, who works for South Ford Royal Hospital alongside her husband, organized searches all along the canal with the help of more than 200 volunteers. When asked what her message for her husband would be, she stated, I want you to come home. It doesn't matter where you have been. All your family is missing you now. I am your world and you are mine. Michelle's last contact with Peter Baglin was on a phone, a cell phone call, that just was very brief before cutting off. He told her he was clearing his head. He was coming home soon, and he loved her. Anyone who may have seen Peter Baglin, or anyone with any information regarding his whereabouts, please contact the switchboard. You can also speak to Crime Stoppers on 0800-555-111. So this has been a very fascinating case, folks. And the fact that it took place very close to the River Weir, right there in between the Bridgewater Canal and the River Weir, is it possible that we have a serial killer in the area? It's very excellent questions. And I'm going to be looking at some of these key points. In this video, I'm covering the cold case of the uh, Peter Baglin incident, um, but I was immediately brought kind of to this fairly dodgy spot, this uh, dodgy area in uh, right by the St. Michael's on the Weir. It's, it's this place known as Rowan Water. The other side of it is called the Rowan Water uh, Fishing Lodge. But anyway, um, I was brought out here as I wish to look, you know, firsthand at what this, what this represents, what this is. And you can see, folks, this is uh, this is most certainly a suspicious uh, spot, suspicious area. There's a lot that goes on here at this kind of uh, riverfront lodge area known as Rowan Water, um, and this would be on the other side of the uh, towpath, actually, that uh, Mr. Baglin ended up disappearing from. 
um, when he went to his uh, stop at the Texaco. Now, I find this interesting because Rowan Water has not really been mentioned all that much um, up until now, but we can see uh, this is kind of a suspicious place, right? They only have, oh, I would say maybe one or two uh, cameras at it. They have the Mad Hunter restaurant that's kind of near nearby, but the Rowan Water Fishing Lodge really doesn't have much going on just one or two cameras to be able to uh, actually collect evidence of this area and uh, see what's going on and who knows because the Rowan Water uh, Fishing Lodge area is a bit dodgy in itself it certainly is uh, plausible that someone could use this this fishing hole this kind of lodge area on the Rowan Water it's uh, near where these boats come in and out, you know, to potentially hide a crime, you know, maybe uh, overwrite a recording that was on one of the only cameras that's here. We could look around here, folks. Uh, this area of uh, Rowan Water is actually off of Garstang Road. Again, I'm not referring right now to the Nicola Bully case, but rather the uh, Peter. Peter Baglin incident, um, but it isn't that far from the towpath, and it makes you wonder if maybe this kind of strange area, you know, might factor in some way into the Nicola Bully and, and also the missing person of Carmen uh, cases as well, in some way. It's certainly unusual, um, and it's a spot that you can't ignore the fact uh, they have almost no cameras covering it, so it is kind of uh, unusual there. Um, that there's a you know open field and some rather suspicious looking barns directly in that uh, directly in that zone. Um, this area doesn't really have anything to do with the river weir per se. It's it's more on the whole opposite side of the river weir. But if you follow that out, you know, it goes right directly to the river. And so um, I just wanted to make sure that we covered this. This is important, uh, especially to me right now, is understanding Rowan Water, this kind of Rowan Water fishing lodge area and uh, recreational area really has blacked out windows and has some rather dodgy uh, non-existent uh, surveillance kind of for the most part nothing to really show what goes on here a lot of the time and I just found it kind of unusual you know um, you would think an area like this would be covered with uh, possible um, cameras at least or people that would be interested in finding out more about what goes on but there's not it's just very very isolated kind of an isolated area isolated uh, zone out here and there's a field in back which is I would say a bit strange because the field you know if you would go into the field it goes on for several miles but all there is is like barns and kind of dodgy areas with abandoned vehicles and things like that right here so anyway I just wanted to make sure to cover this this is the Rowan Water Lodge and uh, it's kind of right there parallel to uh, the towpath that leads over to the Bridgewater Canal. Um, and the Rowan Water Lodge and the, the Rowan Water Fishing Establishment, I feel are, are certainly something worth keeping a very close eye on. Thank you. More to come. Something strange and suspicious is taking place down near the River Weir. What happened to 54-year-old uh, Peter Baglin, who went missing? on the 28th of December in 2022. The Texaco Garage East Lancashire Road. A missing Lancashire man is around 5 foot 10 inches in height with short gray hair on the side that is a bit longer on top. He has a tattoo on the side of his neck that states the words Michelle. He also had a gray jacket and gray tracksuit bottoms and train, trainers on at the exact time 
of this incident. Peter Baglin has been missing from Boothstown, Worsley since the evening of December 28th in 2022. Peter was last seen on CCTV buying a whiskey at the Texaco garage right there by East Lancashire Road in the Mosley Commons area at 7.38 p.m. on the 28th. His belongings were found along the canal, the Bridgewater Canal, the next day. There has been no sign of Mr. Baglin, and the water was searched immediately, and still six weeks later, no, no body or any sign of him has surfaced. Please bring more attention to Peter Baglin's case. There's a lot more information from his family in the Facebook group. Find Peter Baglin. Funny how this isn't the same coverage as Carmen and Nicola, uh, Nico the Nicola Bully case. It's fascinating that something is going on there, folks. And I'm going to be exploring that more. Sound off in the comments. How do you feel about the mysterious disappearance of uh, Mr. Peter Baglin? It seems uh, quite unusual that he could just get up and vanish fairly quickly, wouldn't you say? Let us know your thoughts. So this is essentially the Texaco station where Mr. Baglin was allegedly last spotted or seen um, here in the area near the towpath. Now, the towpath is just off of East Lancashire Road, so it's not really anywhere close to, for example, the River Weir. However, it can't be ignored the interesting similarities of building architecture, okay, right here in this area off of uh, uh, Lancashire Road, of course, um, because essentially this area where he disappeared is is on the opposite side. You can see if you check um, kind of with the trees and the map, the map of this uh, location. It's kind of in the opposite side of where the official Rowan Water uh, fishing lodge and lodge and all of that, it, it, you know, is at. And so it's, it's I it strikes me as odd is what I'll say about that, that he disappeared right here directly at this Texaco station. And on the other side of all these houses and all that that's back there is essentially the Rowan Water kind of fishing hole, fishing lodge slash tourist lodge where they go out and they would go on riverboats or things like that, allegedly. That's what they say that they would do sometimes. Um, and this place is just, it, it's very suspicious to me, you know. You see a lot of trucks here, and the trucks don't have any identification. So they're kind of like just trucks that peruse this area and so on. And although this specific area where Mr. Baglin disappeared is, is most certainly not anywhere even close to the River Weir, it can't be ignored the fact that this towpath crosses the area that kind of goes near... Uh, nearer, I would say, to where Rowan Water is. And if you follow Rowan Water out, oh, just like a mile or so, you know, not really all that far, but at least, you know, 500,000 feet to a mile, something like that, it takes you directly to the same area uh, where the victims disappeared and where apparently Nicola Bully also disappeared along a similar path. You know, at that at that stage, you would be at the River Weir. So, regardless, out here in this specific spot, in this area, it just seems a bit unusual to me. Um, that we see a lot of back and forth with the vehicles, uh, with trucks and so on, um, and people and warehouse kind of district areas where you would see the truck, but the truck's window will be tinted so you can't really identify the truck, you know. I, it just seems kind of odd to me. Maybe they're working for a specialized company or something, but these windows, you know, they're tinted black. So you can't really look in, even if you wanted to find out more about this area. Uh, there's nothing to look into. You can see vehicles that are tourists, 
Uh, but as far as the trucks and things, all their windows are tinted black. So I found that, um, obviously I found that a little bit suspicious. So what do you guys feel? What, what are your thoughts on the Peter Baglin mystery uh, with what we've started to uncover at least so far? Do you feel like this is not a uh, very safe area, perhaps? And that's something, I don't know, um, just unusual appears to uh, most certainly be going on in this area. And uh, that would include, of course, at Rowan Water. Sound off in the comments. Let me know your, you know, most potent ideas. Let me know your real thoughts of this situation now. Um, I find it fascinating that the trucks here, you know, they require certain permissions to be licensed or to be parked here and so on. We never learn about these trucks, though. They just, they say they're like moving trucks and so on. But really, seems a bit more uh, than that to me, you know. I'll just say that. If there's a subway, yeah, that's perfectly normal. But some of this other stuff, it just doesn't strike at all to me as something uh, very normal. In this area, just seems, I don't know how you say it in France, but muy peculiar, just a bit peculiar. Too many dark windows, you know, too many areas unidentified. And very, very close, I will say that's the most suspicious part to me, okay? fairly close to where Rowan Water is for the fishing lodge where all the fishermen go. So, anyway, thank you. CCTV footage, Mr. Baglin was seen near the Texaco garage of East Lanks Road in the Mosley Commons area of Lancashire. That evening, he spoke to his wife at around 8.15. He went on for a walk down the towpath, and he said that he was going to simply walk along the Bridgewater Canal. But despite her worry, he suggested he would be back first thing. In the following days, police deployed a search team in the area, trawling the entire towpath in the woodlands uh, with divers along the Bridgewater Canal. And they, all they found were just a few of his uh, belongings, which included a hat, a phone, allegedly, bank cards, a stick of tobacco of some kind, and a house key along with headphones. No other sightings were reported. The search on Sunday, the 26th of February, was organized by a Facebook group of volunteers. The volunteers would retrace all of Peter Baglin's steps directly to where his belongings are found, while others walked for miles on the East Lanks Road. One volunteer stated, in fact, we've been searching for him since the day we found out he was missing. And they've had no luck this entire time they've been searching. It's interesting, huh? The whole community is distraught now. We cannot believe this happened. Another person also added, I saw today's search on Facebook and thought I would come down. People have bought, uh, brought their kids as well. One of the searches we have done was all around the Astley Moss, and we still have found nothing, so we decided to come to the spot where his stuff was found and start really looking around. And that was very smart, because honestly... This is a kind of uh, suspicious sp uh, suspicious spot, suspicious area. You, you don't run into those very often, you know. This seems a little suspicious. The turnout has been outstanding. They all know about Pete. Most people know him as well. Peter Baglin was seen wearing navy colored joggers, walking shoe trainers, and a gray mountain equipment hoodie with a red zip. He is described as being five foot ten with gray hair and a tattoo on his neck. He also always wears his, med his wedding ring with Michelle. So, thank you again, folks. Make sure to get this, uh, this case out there far and wide. Let's get a lot more attention placed on Mr. Peter Baglin. I think that this um, really crosses over with some interesting things to some of the missing person cases that are in the United Kingdom. Thank you. So that is, of course, the fascinating and most interesting beginning of the cold case of the United Kingdom's 
missing person, Peter Baglin. Now, I will say a few things about this key issue. A lot of people are unaware of this case and have never heard of the name Peter Baglin. So I encourage you, make sure to get this video out to the general public, to the general audience, so that they all know uh, Mr. Peter Baglin actually did disappear on the towpath, all the way on the opposite side, closer to where Rowan Water Fishing Lodge is, interestingly enough, rather than close at all to the river, uh, River Weir. But still, nonetheless, in the same general area, in the same general vicinity as well. And it's fascinating alone because there have been witnesses, alleged witnesses, who reported and said that they saw Mr. Baglin walking in a different area or something to that effect. But again, based upon what I've discovered, that person <clears throat> that was spoken about is most certainly not Peter Baglin. Is confirmed to not be uh, Mr. Baglin at all. So there is this analogy out there of possible people who are going missing at certain times, right? It's in the United Kingdom. Um, but also having kind of body doubles or just somebody who has kind of a similar appearance to them showing up in the Lancashire area. So I found that fact interesting. So the Peter Baglin case is certainly worth uh, worth the uh, in-depth study. So make sure to get this, you know, get this to your friends, get this to your colleagues, and sound off in the comments below. What do you feel right now about the Peter Baglin case? Thank you.